What's up everybody, me Tom Gamer here. The new year has come and gone and left us with a lot to think about when it comes to video games. 2016 was an interesting year when it comes for games of all sorts. There's a lot of them that went unnoticed, either rightfully so, or you probably just missed the game of the year itself. This got me thinking of what game over the years got left in the dark with barely no mention or got overcrowded by bigger games. Today, I want to bring you my top 5 of underappreciated games. These are personal gems of mine that I find didn't get the praise that they should have. Keep in mind, this list that follows is in order of release and not worst to best. Enjoy the video! Let's get started with the first game on the list, 13. Released in 2003, 13 is, one could say, a precursor of sorts to the art style of Telltale Games. This cel shaded video game is somewhat based on graphic novels, released in 1984 by Jean Van Am and William Vance. There's also two seasons of the television show named 13, the series, which made its debut in April 2011. 13 was released in the PS2 Xbox era of console and was developed by Ubisoft Paris, which are now known more for the Just Dance series, and was published by Ubisoft. In this first-person shooter, you play as the protagonist Jason Fly, also known as 13, hence the name of the game. You are waked up on the beach by a lifeguard and you suffer from amnesia, how convenient. You are part of the 20, who also have a nice Roman numeral tattoo on them, is also the same group that conspired to kill the President of the United States. At this point, it should be obvious, you got blamed for the damn thing and must find and kill the 1900 conspirators to clear your name. The game is a mix of action combat and stealth with a wide arsenal of weapon and cool other tricks. Back in 2003, this game got a 73 on Metacritics, being described as great story-driven sheen, but at its core, it's weighed down by some occasional bewildering flaws, in addition to the lackluster weapon and simple comeback. This was stated by iGen. Oh, and by the way, the protagonist was voiced by David Duchovny. I remember playing this game back in the day, and I fell in love with the art style of the game because not a lot of other video games did it that way in 2003. Although the game was not the top of the year's pile of releases, I still remember it having one of the most captivating stories of that year, if you take out Vice City, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, Max Payne 2, and a few more heavy hitters. This is a great FPS to pick up and play in a comic book setting. Eliminate him! I want that safe key! Up next on the list of underappreciated game is Def Jam Fight for New York. You messed up, D-Mob. Yeah, who's gonna put my kid through college now, eh? Don't worry, someone else will come along and take his place. Ain't that right? Look out! This street-style fighting game features some of the biggest names in the rap industry back in 2004, like Red Man, Method Man, Buster Rhyme, Snoop Dogg, Ludacris, and so many more. This is another PS2 Xbox era game, which could be played single or multiplayer. Def Jam was developed and published by Electronic Arts. Getting into the game itself, you play the new guy in one of New York's fight hip-hop fighting crew, which is the result of you saving their leader. The basic run of the game is to fight other fighters from a rival hip-hop crew and win clubs and show Crow, which is played by Snoop Dogg, who is the best crew in town. At the beginning, you create your own character with the choice of six different voices and can customize him with well-known popular brand from era like Reebok and Air Jordan. The game also features a ton of other game modes like Cage Match, Subway Match, and so on. Def Jam Fight for New York received a score of 84 on Metacritic, being praised for the deepest story ever seen in a fighter simply adds to the realistic feel of the brutal combat within by the Sydney Morning Herald. This is a game I really enjoyed playing at the time due to the fact that I was deep into hip-hop at that point in my life. The game had a hard-hitting punching animation with the sound to go with it and had a cool customization for the time in the game. Definitely a game to check out for you fighting game fans. This is getting personal. While you're down there, how about you shine my shoes? Next up on the list of underappreciated game is Scarface The World Is Yours. Do you wanna play rap? This open world game came out in 2006 and features the storytelling of our favorite Cuban immigrant Tony Montana. Now if you watch the movie, you know that the general storyline of our cigar smoking drug lord is an open and shut case. Comes to America, gets involved into drug business, 
gets really big and powerful with the money, crosses the wrong dude, and die horribly in the end. Well, the devs at Radical Entertainment had a different plan, and Montana's story took a turn for game sakes, and he survives the slaughter in the mansion. The player must buy businesses, take out rival gangs, and buy slash sell cocaine to retake control of his Miami empire. When the game was released in the PS2 slash Xbox era in 2006, the game received a Metacritic score of 73, and it was called as being a very playable and addictive open world game that manages to put its own fresh spin on familiar genre. Also, very repetitive, and it's every bit as profane, violent, and over the top as the movie, and delivers not only the gunplay you are expecting, but as much depth as almost any other game in the genre. Personally, when I remember the game, it brings back memories of feeling like you're in the movie itself, giving the player a perspective on Tony Montana's life instead of only glimpses. It was a great stand-in while the world waited for GTA 4, which came out in 2008. If you're a gamer and loved Scarface, you'll probably enjoy this game as much as I did. See you in hell! Oh, you crazy man! You like them? Next on the docket of underappreciated game is the 2014 reboot of Thief. I would have went for the pickle jar pass so a lot more weight. Shit. I see you still can't work a door. You don't come to see me, you don't write. <laughs> I thought both you and Aaron had been killed in the mansion attack. Where the hell have you been? This stealth game came out during what most would say the transition period between the PS4 slash Xbox 360 and PS4 slash Xbox One era of game and might have suffered because of this. The game came out for new gen also, but felt like PS3 game no doubt. It got left in the dust because of its storytelling and some of the mechanics were a bit wonky, like hearing enemies that were on the other side of a wall, like they were right beside you and so on. The game was developed by Eidos Montreal and published by Square Enix. In this dark and grimy game, you play as Gareth, a master thief armed with a blackjack for knocking out guards, and many more options to go through certain situations. The protagonist must discover what happened to his apprentice Aaron, and get rid of the tyrant, the Byron, which is holding the city, that's actually what the name of the town is, the city, which is being held on lockdown, so a weird plague that goes by the name of the Gloom doesn't spread to other part of the city. Thief, or what it's called during the development Thief 4, which received a Metacritic score of 67, which came with a multitude of praise and criticism, like one of the best action stealth title in years, and the return of Master Thief Garrett is a mixed bag. Thief was one of the first titles I bought for my PS4 back in the day and had a great time while playing it. I personally really enjoyed the game enough to platinum it and fell in love with the choices available to the player when it comes to choosing the difficulty of the game. When I played, I chose to play the hardest difficulty by setting it not to be allowed to be spotted and can't knock anybody out which really gave me a hard time. I would definitely recommend if you enjoy stealth games. Garrett, I'm slipping! Ah! Garrett! Give me the Our final game on the underappreciated game list is the recently released PC game Orwell. Oh shit. Those pixelated people! Oh no! Not the pixelated people! No! The reason why I decided to go with a 2016 game is because I felt that most people didn't even acknowledge this simulation game, which was developed by Osmotic. If you never heard of Orwell, you feel like you're playing a Big Brother type game. You play as a newly recruited investigator and must find information concerning a recent mumming which happened in a country called The Nation. The gameplay is pretty simple. Scroll and click through news articles, social media pages, and websites to find information concerning the suspects you're investigating. And let me tell you, the story even takes a turn that even caught me by surprise. This 
episodic video game was received with the Metacritic score of 75, which GameSpot said it uses simple mechanics to tell a complex and engaging story, one that feels particularly relevant right now. I played each episode of Oral when they were released and was immediately captivated by the story and unique mechanism, which some might say are too simplistic, but personally, I think it helped the storytelling a lot. This is a great pick-me-up game, which each episode lasting about 45 minutes to an hour. Winter day, oh god. No, 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 take a look at the news. What happened? What happened? Oh, God. Two dead after second explosion. Half an hour ago. That is horrible. Two dead, similar approach, same letter found, so these assaults are connected. And as if it wasn't enough already, Miss Watergate was in custody at the time, so that's her out of the picture, at least for this attack. Uh, the template matters so much for our simple test case. That does it for my personal list of underappreciated game, and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't worry, I know I might have missed some of your games that came out since the year 2000, and I want you to tell me in the comments below what games you think were underappreciated and left unnoticed. Of course, with that said, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Follow me everywhere at MeTimeGamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and right here YouTube.com forward slash MeTimeGamer, where I post a new video every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 3pm Eastern Time. So thank you so much guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Keep on keeping on.